Hi there, Paul here from TheEngineeringMindset.com. In this video, we're going to look at the basic operation of a centralized chilled water system. Now, this is very typical in, an, in office buildings all around the world. And we've got a little model here of a basic built, um, office building, stripped of all its uh, all insides. And if you can imagine, normally, uh, these floors would be filled with people and computers and server rooms and it's going to generate a lot of heat especially when the sun is beating down on the building in the middle of summer so this building is going to have to produce a lot of cooling to handle that heat and keep the inside of the building um, at a very nice temperature so how does it do that well you need some plant items first and uh, in this uh, very typical setup we've got a chiller here along with the distribution pumps the air handling units and the cooling tower which is up on the roof so the chiller is the uh, the producer of chilled water in this system and the chiller has two main cylinders one is the evaporator here and that's where the chilled or cold water is produced and the other cylinder is uh, this at the back here which is the condenser Ooh. which is the uh, condenser cylinder and that is where the heat of the building is sent uh, is collected and sent to the the cooling towers now a real chiller will look something like this we have the evaporator the, the chilled side which is in this case all in, uh, insulated to keep that cool cool thin side and uh, then you've got the compressor on top as, as well as the uh, power supply and the controls for the system as well. This is a centrifugal chiller. Um, there's lots of different types, which we will we won't go into detail in this video. We just need to understand the basics of how the, this building is cooled. So the chilled water leaves the evaporator and is pulled out in this instance by the by the pump. Sometimes it can be um, pushed in, in this case it's being pulled out uh, it's dependent on the system and the design of the chiller and you'll notice that I've coloured these pipes in, one of the a dark blue that's for leaving the evaporator and I've put it a dark blue so that you know that it is uh, a much cooler temperature so this is leaving at about 8 degrees uh, something, may, well, maybe 6 to 8 degrees and is leaving in this design at 54 liters per second. The other pipe, the lighter blue one, that is so you know it um, is a higher temperature and in this instance it's about 14 degrees Celsius. Um, yeah, 12 to 14, maybe a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, it all depends on the design of the system and the load of the building. In the in the real world, though, these these pipes will not be this color. Uh, they they could be, but they're unlikely to be. In the real world, they will look something like this. And you'll you can see here we've got chill CHW chilled water flow, and an arrow so you obviously understand where it's going, and chilled water return with uh, the British standard. Uh, color bands and arrows and labeling system there and this is uh, in almost every plant room you'll, you'll find the pipes will be uh, labeled and no noted this way but for illustration purposes uh, I've just colored them in here so you get a better understanding of what is happening in the system so the pump is pulling this chilled water about 8 degrees and it is sending it up into the riser. Uh, a real life pump looks something like this. This is a direct coupled centrifugal pump with the 
uh, motor on the back here and then it's coupled straight onto the uh, pump here which is under some insulations you can't see it unfortunately in this photo but that chilled water is sent up into the riser which are these pipes here and they that riser or those risers um, rise the height of the building and branching off of the risers are some feeds flow and return into these which are air handling units in the real world the air handling units will probably look something like this this is a very small example there are much larger designs and even smaller units than this as well but it all depends on the design and the load of the building uh, here we've got the uh, flow and return and it's going into the coil here which I'm going to explain about um, just shortly and we've got one coil here for uh, heating and one for cooling as well which I'll talk about next so the air handling unit its purpose is to take the warm air within the office um, floor uh, it gets pulled in through a fan and that fan then rejects it out the other side and it's distributed off through some ductwork um, off to various points in the office to where it's needed and inside this air handling unit is a coil and the coil will look something like this in the real world and chilled water enters the coil and makes its way up through all these little, uh, little, little loops here and then back out the uh, the top here. So that enters at about eight degrees in this example, and by the time it reaches the top there, it'll leave that cooling coil at about fourteen degrees. So that um, rise in temperature is the result of the air which is passing through this air handling unit cooling down. So the warm air enters, it hits this coil, the coil transfers its cool into the air and the air transfers its heat into the coil. Uh, the air leaves at a lower temperature and the water then leaves at a higher temperature. The air handling units, there could be one per floor, there could be multiple per floor, there could be one on the floor here and the ductwork serves a number of floors below. And this is just illustration purposes to uh, just to help you understand that. So that uh, chilled return water uh, goes back into a riser, and that is fed back down into the um, evaporator of the chiller. Inside the chiller is a separate system which is running around between the compressor, the condenser and the evaporator as well as the, the vein guide at the bottom there. And that is a, a refrigeration cycle happening in there. And what's happening there is the heat within this um, pipe here that is being carried away by the refrigerant and sent into the condenser where it can dump its heat and, uh, and be taken away to the cooling towers. Inside a chiller, it'll look something like this. So we've got the evaporator side here, the cool side, and the condenser side here, as well as the um, compressor and the vein guide at the bottom there. So the refrigerant is uh, just flowing around this system here transferring that heat from one side to the other and going to a continuous loop. And we've got some other videos on the refrigeration cycle if you want to learn more just check out our videos. So now that the heat in this pipe here has been transferred over to the condenser side, the condenser then sends this water which is now, it's just now called the condenser water and sends that up to the tower. And in this instance, I've colored this pipe red so that you know it's a higher temperature. 
and uh, in this example it's, it's about 35 degrees Celsius obviously and uh, it's at a flow rate of about 58 liters a second as well being sent up to the cooling towers that can change us um, it's just on this design for illustration purposes and uh, we've got the condenser return water here and in this example it's about 28 degrees so it's lost it, um, by the time it goes up to the cooling tower and comes back it's lost about seven degrees in this instance that's at design though in, in the real world it may not be as high as that in the winter it wouldn't uh, it would be much lower too but um, yeah so the in the real world the condenser pipe work will look something like this so um, oh sorry that's the wrong one it's chilled water return uh, it will just say condenser water here and uh, we'll have some markings on the colors there I've used the wrong image apologies so that warm condenser water is sent up to the cooling towers on the roof of the building and in this instance it's an open cooling tower so that means that the warm condensed water enters into the cooling tower and is sprayed and that spray uh, is then ru runs down the inside of the cooling tower and is collected at the bottom running in the opposite direction is some um, is air being pulled by these fans here and that these fans pull the ambient air outside the building into the cooling tower and out up through the top in that process this warm condenser water will lose some of its heat and the air entering and leaving uh, this cooling tower it will, it will leave a much higher temperature than when it came in it will also have left with some moisture so the relative humidity will have increased as well a real cooling tower looks something like this this is the Baltimore Air Coil Company this is a very typical uh, cooling tower you'll find on the roof of lots of buildings and just to give you an idea if you're not familiar with cooling towers this is New York City and as you can see almost every building here has cooling towers of uh, one size or another some more than others it all depends on the size of the building and what <clears throat> uh, what's happening inside there as well but they are on every big building in pretty much every city around the world so once this cooling tower has lost about seven degrees in the uh, cooling process it is collected at the bottom and it is sent back down to the condenser pump and that is then pushed back inside uh, the condenser I've actually put this pump around the wrong way there um, that's obviously coming out there should be the other way pipe the other way but this is a free video so I'm not correcting it <laughs> and yeah so this is where the the water condenser water then comes back into here enters into these coils inside and picks up more heat and is sent back up to the cooling towers it's important to note that this system here the condenser water system and the chilled water system are completely separated they do not interact they do not swap the water in between it is just the refrigerant which happens in the refrigeration cycle between these units that's the only thing that passes between them. The water in here is sealed in tubes and, uh, and, and leaves again through those pipes. Also, in this instance, we've got one plant item. And by plant item, I mean a, a mechanical asset. In the real world, it's unlikely you'll have just one. You'll probably have N plus one. So N, whatever you need, you have that number plus one because if this item here was the brake or say this um, pump here was the brake then 
we wouldn't be able to uh, produce cooled, wa cooled water or condenser water and we wouldn't be able to cool the building down so we'd always usually have um, at least two units there and they'll operate in duty and standby so only one uh, plant item will operate at any one time and they will probably rotate um, their duties so that this pump would run for a week and the other one would then run for the week afterwards and swap vice versa and that also allows you to carry out maintenance on the system as well on larger buildings uh, you're more likely to have a more much more complex system than this you'll have uh, two three four chillers maybe even more than that and a lot more air handling units and cooling towers or bigger cooling towers and the complexity um, of the system is completely based on the load of the building you might even have um, a number of separate chilled water systems you could have uh, a system which deals with critical so it's uh, generator fed and it supplies uh, only the server rooms because they need cooling 24 7 and you'll have uh, this common centralized system which handles the, the space temperature uh, within the floors but this is a very basic overview and uh, we'll go into the more complex systems uh, in later videos but thank you for watching and please check out our others